to do a show now on the eclipse that's happening on Monday, the 8th of April. And I've been doing a few shows on this topic, so now we have a whole different group of guests. I'm sure everyone has their own take on what's going to happen. What I'd like to do first, before we get into that, is introduce each and every one of you. So I'll just go around and just say your name so people know. We've got um, David Farman, Donna McGrath, Eric Deadmeyer, and James Grunfig. And Josh, uh, actually, Josh may be joining us. We don't know, so we're waiting to see if Josh Reed is going to show up. Uh, but here we are, and it's it's really great to be here with you guys. We were just uh, stopped on YouTube, so they won't let me go live right now on YouTube. I don't know what happened there. I was live yesterday on YouTube. <laughs> Maybe that's why. But anyway, <laughs> so let's uh, let's go around introductions first. James Grunvig. Yeah, hi, James Grunvig with Decentralized Media. Yeah, my show is Unrestricted Warfare. You can see it right behind me. I'm on Josh Reed's platform temporarily until Decentralized Media launches. So that's red, that's rumble.com forward slash red pill project. And I got a documentary that was supposed to come out this week on the eclipse called Noah's Eclipse, Deluge of Shadows. Unfortunately, my film editor's son passed away last week in a motorcycle accident. So that's been delayed a week. But I'm still going to run it out at the end of next week because... It is a very important story to everything from spirituality, politics, the Great Reset, all the above. Excellent. Okay. Uh, and you're so you're a bar about to start up this new channel, right? Correct. It's coming in, in, in maybe ten days or so. So it will be up. Excellent. Okay. So we're just um, sorry, letting no people know because unfortunately they're going to be hunting for us on YouTube and we're not there. <laughs> uh, okay, and so Eric, do you want to introduce yourself? Hi, I'm Eric the Healer, uh, world famous whistleblower, public speaker, co-producer of conferences. I'm the whistleblower who gave Jesse Venture the FEMA camp information about the coffin liners in the 90s and 93. And two years later, he went with Alex Jones and lost his show when he uh, gave talked about those coffin liners. But I also told him about the guillotines and the civilian inmate handbooks. And, and what's ironic is we're using these places for the military tribunals and against the same people who wanted to use it against us. And then after that, I was a whistleblower at the Department of Public Health about the fake pandemic and the bioweapon jab. And I'm a, I'm a pioneer speaker about the Mandela effect and the relationship of the 5G and the jab. And the, I'm a pioneer speaker about transhumanism and um, Mandela effect. And, you know, you can find my videos on YouTube. Um, I've been working, I've known Said since the 1980s. And, and when I first started speaking with him in 19, 2013, I met you there and, and Bill. <laughs> and uh, so I've been doing this, you know, I've been involved in the UFO movement as a researcher, experiencer. And, and our, we're having a show, and I, we're happy to see you uh, this coming April um, at alienevent.com and biomedexpo.com and LAX uh, Sonesta in April 11th through the 14th. We're, we're excited to see you and have you. You're the queen of disclosure and, and a major, um, you know, you did so many interviews and talked to so many people, and, and it's just so wonderful to know all these pioneers in the, in the movement from the beginning in the 80s and meeting them firsthand and them telling me things bef and meeting them before they were famous and, and so okay that's so really thank you good. um that's great a great we're just a short introduction here so you. donna mcgrath you're next oh oh hi hi everybody uh, my name is donna mcgrath um i was a former nih molecular biologist uh, our lab, uh, I worked with Candace Pert actually, and our lab found a cure for sickle cell anemia in 19, uh, oh God, eight, 1980s. And we uh, went on to go to the, um, to be with Ronald Reagan and go to the White House. And our work was on API, UPI, the Wall Street Journal, and the front page of the New York Times. And, and it was touted as the, uh, the first time molecular biology came to the bedside. Subsequently, skipping forward in 1994, um, after some deaths in my family, um, 
I had a huge transformation and an out-of-body experience where I went to Andromeda and uh, was downloaded with, I asked the light what the cure for all diseases was. And so uh, I was downloaded with the Flower of Life Sacred Geometry and um, very many, uh, 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 I don't know, very, very much information regarding the Akashic Records and the history of the planet. When I came back, um, I became... Uh, I studied very many modalities, alternative modalities, worked in a health food store for 15 years, and um, started channeling the remedies for people when they would come into the health food store. I became a medium. I've spoken at all the, the New Life and the Conscious Life Expos. And uh, then I combined all of my different modalities into my own healing modality. And now I'm no, I've turned a lot of uh, miracle healings on people. I worked with uh, Sean David Morton with along with Carrie and um, brought him back from being flatlined. And um, in several, I mean, I've worked with 60,000 people since 1994. So, so okay, basically. So Donna, maybe, I'm going to thank you very much. That's yeah. a great introduction. You packed a lot into a small space. <laughs> thank I you. I tried to. <laughs> okay. So, uh, yeah, so we're going to continue on here and, um, you know, everybody's bios can, and links to their sites will be available on the page under this broadcast when we're done too. But I think a lot of people do know these guests, but David Farman, go right ahead. Uh, thank you, Carrie, for inviting me. It's Said David Farman here. I'm Persian American and, uh, uh, I've been, uh, in ET Disclosure since 1980s and uh, I'm honored to be here with all of you guys uh, I greet you I'm the connector between many groups and societies and platforms to bring all the nations even worldwide to disclosure my my title uh, has been given to me many years ago new hope for humanity I'm still alive. I did not die near death experiences a few times and uh, attacks or whatever. I did survive and uh, regardless of living or dying, we have a mission to accomplish in this lifetime and the future lifetimes to bring the humanity to a higher echelon of uh, from 101 to 102. And uh, uh, that's why we are here in this planet as a mission from Atlantis and Pleiades and all these uh, lifetimes of Egypt, uh, you name it. Uh, I've been many things, many lifetimes. Okay, and, um, I'm sorry. Now, David, uh, before we, we, we go, go on, I'd like you to talk a, a tiny bit about your upcoming events. People don't really know necessarily about them, and so this is your opportunity. So give, give a little background on that. Yeah, we got coming event in our April 11th, 12, 13, 14 in Los Angeles, Sonesta Four Star Hotel, over eight ballrooms, six rooms of speakers, and a big ballroom of uh, what you call it, exhibits. And uh, we take in the whole hotel for four days, big money we spend to bring you guys all together. If you have a, if check the tickets, alienevent.com, uh, A-L-I-E-N-E-V-E-N-T.com, or, or biomedexpo.com, our health and Wellness, B I O M A D E X P O dot com. We're all speaking, Carrie speaking, Eric, and Donna is welcome to come. So, what we're saying is, uh, we're bringing everybody together. If you have an issue over a ticket, use 40% discount code David, or Carrie has some cheap tickets she will talk to you about. And also, uh, if you have a money issue from the website or ticket page, please. Uh, email me or text me or call me. We have our phone numbers on our website and, and you can uh, reach us. We will uh, issue you uh, discounted tickets. So make sure alienevent.com, go get your tickets. Carrie uh, uh, Cassidy is speaking on Sunday. We are there four days from Thursday. Uh, a lot of healers, a lot of everything, alchemists, you name it. Uh, we have 50 speakers, exhibit halls and everything. Okay, so I'm putting this on the screen. Uh, basically, I have his ad on my website, and there's a ticket link there, so you can actually go to the front page of my project, CamelotPortal.com, which is actually <laughs> working now, and uh, and there's a link there. You can buy tickets. and Also, this, this event is a stream live. 
on our website there is a link $99 and other companies are streaming it uh, five six companies combined doing the job so we got a lot of groups and joining us and bringing this uh, uh, disclosure for you I hope this is not our last disclosure because we don't know what's happening in America and the world based on uh, Nibiru American government or worldwide situations in World War, III, World War III. So uh, we will hold our flags and platforms as long as we can, and please help us and join us. And also we have October Las Vegas, 17th to 20th. You are all invited again. Okay, thank you, David. Uh, so now what I'd like to do is, the subject is Eclipse. Uh, we're gonna go around the circle again, and this time you can introduce the topic from your point of view and, you know, give some highlights if you could mute your phones, that'd be great. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, guess. Um, so, and and so then we'll just, you know, we'll keep going around as we, as we go. So James, could you kick this off? Sure, absolutely. So let's look at it from the spiritual point of view. This will be the third eclipse in seven years, right? The first eclipse went over seven cities of Salem. This one's going over many cities in Nineveh. Some question whether the one in Montana and Western in, in Virginia are actually in the path. It's not a direct path. So some say 7, 11, or whatever it may be. At the end of the day, this I do feel this is biblical. There, there was a, a woman that found an old 20-year-old book on the history of the Bible, and the chapter 35 and 6 were on the resurrection of Jesus. And apparently Jesus died on the cross on the 8th of April, according to that 200-year-old book. Well, that's pretty interesting. So maybe, maybe this eclipse is going to be pulling the veil finally off, off of Babylon after 6,000 years, over the entire Babylon mystery school, Samaria, Egypt, that we've been controlled by Satanists for a long, long time and controlled by their matrix money, monetary system. And I believe that what comes after this is going to be part of the great awakening or grand awakening or, or the unveiling and that a lot of the people that have been sleepwalking in their lives are actually going to finally wake up for a variety of reasons so i'm looking at this as a very positive thing on the flip side what could possibly the big governments of babylon do against this could they chemtrail some of it right and, and create in weather modification and blot and blot out in parts of the country the eclipse they might do that Right? What is CERN going to do to the eclipse? Don't know. And then we have NASA, of all things, is, is, is launching three sounding missiles, whatever they are, sounding rockets. So it sounds like there's going to be some disruption coming from the cabal. That's, that's what I think. Recording in progress. Okay, so uh, I, I'm going to uh, unmute you, Eric, and hopefully that'll... Or unmute yourself. There you okay. are. Okay. Okay. Go ahead. Thank you. Wow. He really, he really nailed it. He covered. You know, I like the biblical aspect. Um, not knowing what CERN's going to do, I, I'm, I'm not concerned. I'm not concerned about um, CERN because the White Hats are in control of, of CERN. And, and you know, we have these uh, in the grand chess game of. Um, the deep state cabal, you know, going down. They know they're in checkmate, and they know they're going to lose in a few moves, and they're going down fighting, and, and you know, every missile that is, you know, they tried to nuke California on Valentine's Day, but it was stopped by, you know, um, beings that have that technology that take it out. And, and I believe, again, we're going to see, you know, NASA... You know, not try to do something, maybe, but they will be shot down. And I'm not concerned at all about, um, you know, we'll, we're going to see some attempts by the deep state, but but we're the good guys are in control, and and nothing can stop what's coming. And this is a, um, a you know, I, I loved your one of your last interviews with who was it? Uh, Richard, I think Richard Dean, uh, Richard Allen Dean. Or, Richard Allen um, Miller. Miller, Richard Allen Miller, I think it was with him. He talked about um, it, uh, you know, some both a wave and a particle. I think this is going to trigger, you know, we've been getting upgrades. The Schumann resonance is off the scale, 
um, I used to think, you know, I used to see things happen in the world uh, on, you know, or on television or whatever, and know what was going on, figure it out, and it would take the world about a week or two, you know, to figure out, and then they'd say, oh yeah, it was what I figured out. But now, the same day, people are figuring things out immediately as it happened. And all my friends have thought I was crazy all these years speaking like I do. Everybody's talking like me now. And they know. They th- they, I've been vindicated many times when my friends tell me, wow, we know what's going on because you've been crazy all your life. Now we know you were so far ahead of talking. So nothing could stop what's coming. We're getting the upgrades. We're shifting to a, you know, we're not beings with souls. We are souls. And, and we are the dream. We are, this is the illusion we live in. This CIA admits it's a hologram, a matrix that we live in. And maybe we're shifting to this, you know, thousand year of um, golden age, you know, and, and see what is currency? Money? Is it electricity? Is it a, a flow? You know, what are these um, upgrades we're getting? We, you know, we're, we're quantum beings, and this is a quantum financial reset. And we're quantum, you know, we're shifting, we're going to be learning about our higher selves, our, because we're not just this body, we're physical, emotional, intellectual, spiritual, there are many, and, and there are many timelines, but we're the thread that, that links it all together, our, the soul. And so I, I think we're about to have a great, you know, awakening, like you said, he really nailed everything, every point, you know, that, so... And and who can really say what's going to happen? You know, it's just I know it's a good thing, and I feel it in my bones. You know. Okay. So, thank thank you. you. Thank you, Eric. Okay, Donna, go ahead. Oh, wait one second here. I have to unmute you, or I think you can unmute yourself. Okay. Yeah, you're unmuted. Go ahead. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure I'm going to just listen to you guys, but. What I do is I, I figure I like look the same thing as I just sort of notice uh, like what Eric was saying notice uh, global events and notice what like watch the TV and, <laughs> and notice what they're putting out and then if you just believe the opposite of whatever they're saying uh, it's it's usually true and then and then I you know find out a couple of weeks later that it panned out. The other thing I do energetically besides just actually healing uh, people one by one is is I do uh, look at weather patterns and uh, and cosmic events and things and I see what's going to happen ahead of time uh, and then and then transmute it ahead of time so that it decreases the uh, the effectivity of what the dark side is trying to do so um, you know, for instance, there was a storm during COVID uh, down in Texas where uh, it, they said it was 120 degree winds and or mile an hour winds, and it was it was going to be unsurvivable. And and then they just kept saying the word unsurvivable, unsurvivable, unsurvivable. Mm-hmm. And I just I just basically manipulated and reversed the energy. I have a, a couple, uh, and, and actually, what happened was a couple of days later they said well it hit the coast and uh now it's been downgraded to a tropical storm and so that's what i i do i i kind of reverse uh their predictions or downgrade them you know i did that there was a storm before the sandy storm as well in new jersey and i just protected the whole like i put my arm out and i actually protected the whole coast of new jersey and long island and (laughs) It was funny, the storm actually crept in between the place where I didn't protect it, and it went up to Connecticut and caused a blackout, but that was the only uh, thing that happened. So um, if everybody just kind of guides me as to what they think is going to happen or the worst possible outcome, then I will just manifest the opposite of that. Um, well, let me just say, away. I mean, I do appreciate the, the level of ego that you're, you're coming from, but I, I don't think it's quite... Uh, you know appropriate so let's just say that everyone has the capability of putting their energy out there and and making change in our world around us so I appreciate that Donna 
Do you want to talk in a, in a little bit more, less maybe ego-centered t- terms uh, about other... I, I don't, it's, not, it's not really coming from ego. What I do is I talk I talk to my clients and, and everybody can do the same thing. Yeah, it's so just about, that's all I'm saying. So, so I, but the way it sounds, yeah. you, you may not know how it sounds. So okay. I appreciate <laughs> you know, saying you contributed to the changes that made these mitigate you know, weather patterns or whatever. Of course. Of course. I'm but, sure that the White Hats would appreciate that and whatever they're also doing along these lines, right? So right. let's um, let's continue to go into this the story about the eclipse. Do you have anything to say about the eclipse and what you see, uh, you know, ahead of yourself or your experience or what you think is going to happen to the planet or, you know, whatever as a result of the you know, astrological configuration and the configuration of the planets and the this happening once every, I don't know, someone said 2,000 years or something? Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't know. I really have not been studying this. Okay. And what, what I say is that I observe the planetary, again, I just observe the news and then, and then I'm guided to do whatever I do. So um, I talk to my clients as well and, and just show the methodologies that I use to, um, to, revert, like, to reverse hurricanes and things like that. Like if, you, if we would all get, get together and put the intention to reverse any negative uh, side effects of, of, this, uh, of the CERN and what they're doing with the super collider, and reverse the the effects then and and put in overlaying with unconditional love that would be the best thing so it's it's yeah. just very non-specific what i'm talking about okay but, unity you know, I, I look at hurricane patterns and i just do a counter uh rotating uh negative electrical field and i just reverse it energetically um Okay. As as I look at it and concentrate with my mind, so it's it's more about manifestation. And I know if we all stay in a state of unconditional love and look at the positive aspects of it, and just just try to reverse whatever uh, negativity is coming out, then it will come out to be a lot better. Okay. Thank you. All right. Uh, so, David. Do you have, uh, and I've got to unmute you, I think, are you muted? No. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. yes. Okay, good. So, uh, I guess it's my turn. Um, this is multiple events happening at the same time, and, and what's interesting is coming after 2017, the big one uh, occurred over uh, everything Salem, Salem, uh, North Dakota, Salem cities, uh, which in Bible means peace. And after seven years now, it's coming back on America again. And uh, it's showing uh, the passage over every city called Nineveh. Nineveh, Texas, Nineveh this and Nineveh that, every state. So we got seven, seven Nineveh centers in U.S. This is very uh, biblical and very prophetic uh, in terms of... Uh, uh, prophecy. In the meantime, the shadow people trying to take advantage of it. Uh, we heard SpaceX lost the Starship. That's a big, big thing. And I, I start. I, I uh, again, we see a, a alien uh, mothership out there that is influencing this whole thing. We have the comet following the Devil's Comet. That will mess up everything in this equation. We got uh, Taiwan 7.7 happen. That is not a happy time at this moment. We got Planet X. We know Nibiru is in our system. So Nibiru, uh, the effect of Nibiru will go down to 2029. It would not be just one time or twice or eclipse or what. It will go with us for a long time. So uh, guys, prepare for a lot of things until 2029. Uh, and 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 that influences the brains of humans and wars and and famines and all that uh, negative stuff. The positive thing is, people who are upgraded, we can uh, shift our consciousness to a higher level of uh, humanity point two and be very 
very intuitive and very much much more healing and healthy wise and more cosmic wise so we uh as as i speak they're moving my hands so we will connect with our cosmic brothers very soon they are here and they're watching us they're watching the whole scenario they will affect it to save humanity if something goes wrong there is a, a, a negative hands in this uh, scenario uh, we cannot blame CERN for everything. They have projects they want to do, turning on the accelerator at the same time. They they are hiding a bunch of stuff, especially why they're putting the Shiva's a statue of destruction, uh, their god outside there. And a lot of Illuminati, we ask them, who is your god? They go quiet. They don't tell you. I mean, if you ask me who's your god, yeah, I say Elohim, Allah. We're all uh, followed. This God, the only God what we have, that we know, and they're in existence, 144,000 representatives that he sent to this planet to give us the messages. So uh, w what I'm saying is, we got two groups of uh, negative ones and positive ones uh, affecting this eclipse. And also, in the same time, Israel is trying to uh, uh, sacrifice heifer Heifer is the uh, red cow they have. So uh, is it, it goes back to, uh, you can read the Surah Bhagavad, uh, the first, uh, uh, the second, I think, uh, Koran Surah Bhagavad is a big book of Koran about Israel and, uh, and Jews and Hebrews uh, out of uh, Egypt. So what that, uh, also in that book of Koran, it talks about, God told them, go grab a, a heifer, the red uh, cow that is never being captured or prisoned or whatever, I mean, caged, and, and sacrifice that on the temple. So now Israel is preparing big sacrificial on the close to Mount Zion, uh, Zion uh, to, uh, with the red heifer they have. And they want to uh, create the third temple on where the Islamic uh, Omar Mosque is, and that's very holy for Muslims. It will create a lot of havoc and wars and and more hate for uh, uh, Israelis doing that instead of creating peace and joint venture. Uh, why they're killing babies? I don't know why such a genocide when uh, or or American presidents, three American presidents killed. 11 million Muslims over 20 years. You know, we can name them, but you guys all know them. Okay, um, so I, thank you, David. I yeah. uh, appreciate that. Right. And I just want to make sure people understand, you know, I wasn't attacking Donna. I just, the phrasing a certain way, you know, she, she didn't mean to be talking exactly from ego. She wasn't talking from ego, but it comes out that way because you have to be really careful the way you phrase things. So everyone out there can understand that we can all affect the world around us and if we right. unify and do it together we're even more powerful so individuals have, have their powers and everyone has different whatever they've accessed and they can steer it and they can focus it and direct it and of course the illuminati are doing the same thing you know this is how it works so groups can work together and they certainly are and this this time of the solar eclipse is going to be a time when the world's eyes are sort of focused on this day on what might happen so to speak and um i have i you know i i'm not gonna do any kind of thing myself right the second i just wanted to clarify that for my little bit here uh, James, what I'd like to do now is keep going around the circle and we can even bounce around a little bit. And when somebody says something that you want to address, then why don't you raise your hand? And then if you don't mind, I'll call on you sort of just, just so it doesn't become a free for all. But basically, because I know that everyone is touching on different subjects now and let's move forward along those lines and touch on you can either reply to something you heard or you can augment it or you can you know bring up a new topic okay I'll so bring up a new topic and plus touch on the red heifer and, yeah. and uh, essentially 
What is April 8th? April 8th in a leap year is the 99th day of the year. Why is that important? In the world of Gematria, the sacred numbers language, interesting enough that the first result, the top result of 99 is Noah. Are we in the days of Noah? It certainly feels that way. What's even more interesting is when the Alliance took down the the, the uh, ship, the bridge that is in Baltimore last week. It happened at one twenty eight in the morning. They knew then that the 20 construction workers were having lunch off the bridge. They basically blocked people. There was a minimal depth. That, that was a black hat operation. They would have blown that bridge at 6 or 7 at night. They would have taken it down at rush hour. They didn't do that. It was the opposite. That is to wake us up. And if you go to a Q drop, and I know people don't like them, but tough. 3898, which has got a four-year, two-day delta to that ship accident, it says the key that opens all doors. What's the key? The key bridge. That's not really the key. The start, the start of what? The revelation that shipping containers have been the supply chain for, for adrenochrome, for child sex trafficking. This is the stuff that's really going to blow the minds of the normies out there. This is going to wake up humanity and galvanize us together, unite us beyond what we are today. It's going to bring BLM over here, Krishna serves over here, and come together. Not as friends, but but to face the common enemy, which is the cabal at the top. That is where this is heading. What's even more interesting, at 128, if you put that into the Gematria calculator, what comes out? Top result? CERN. Not an accident. This is absolutely, the White Hats are pointing us in a direction of Noah, and they're pointing us in the direction of CERN, and this is all very interesting. On the red heifer, if you're a Christian and if you actually believe Jesus Christ was fulfilled through the red heifer prophecy, he was the tenth red heifer sacrifice on the cross. Meaning whatever comes next doesn't really matter in God's plan if you're a believer in Christianity. Well, why doesn't it matter? What because he you- fulfilled property, prophecy. He was a nine red heifer sacrifice in the Old wow. Testament. He was the tenth. That that ends it. There's no need to sacrifice animals anymore for God. It's over. That part of it. Yeah, over. I really. I mean, please. How how you know blood sacrifice still in this world is just insane. And no, that, I'm not that saying that, but but this is for God, not for Satan. Let's not confuse, right? This was from yeah, good, good luck with that. Bible. Okay, That's good luck with saying. that. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, um, but thank you. Uh, okay. So, uh, Eric. I had to unmute myself. I, wow, he's right on the money again. You know, I'm glad he said it because I've been thinking it all along. As soon as I saw, you know, that that the captain was Ukrainian, you know, these things are uh, are impossible to happen. You know, because they're not even allowed to drive their ships. They have a dock master who comes in, and and so many steps have to be, you know, to happen. And then, how do you have two minutes missing from a black box? You know, I knew that it was, you know, <laughs> yeah, the that's exactly, yeah. The white hats are in control, you know, and and it's to wake the people up. I'm the guy, Donald Trump. This is what I'm talking about at our show. I am the guy that Donald Trump time traveled about 7 years ago back to 1985 to pick my brain. I saw this stuff happening. <laughs> oh god. Back in the 80s, okay? okay that's what I'm talking about. Ego, big time. There you uh, go I'm again, Donald again. Trump. Okay, okay. 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 And no Forget one can ego. argue with that. Other than oh, you're right. You're right. Let me finish. Don't advertise, <laughs> Eric. <laughs> I mean, I'm sorry. I have to call it as I see it. You know me. You can say you can say what you want, but what I'm saying is right. these things are happening in front of us that you cannot deny. Okay. And it, and how do you wake people up? When he asked me, how do we wake people up? I said you can't tell people anything. I laughed. I said you can't tell people anything. You have to show them. You have to show them. They have to see it for themselves. And if the swamp is so deep and, and to be drained, that's why it's taking so long. I want it to be over with, you know, yesterday too, you know. But it's taking so long because it's so deep and, and they put, they use the, it's a sting operation and and executive orders are being um, extended that no way in hell Biden would extend, you know. And, and there's just too many, too many comms. And, you know, my birthday is October 28th when Q started. I'm also talking about how I met Q, okay, who's an alien that, I, that you met, that you know from conferences. I'll tell you who he is. And, and you know JFK is. You, you told me, you know, you know Juan Osama is JFK. After Don, Donald Trump time traveled, when I worked at the grocery store, 
he he time traveled and he uses the name John Titer. I'm telling you, major shit's happening. It's not about me. I'm not selling books. That's not my ego. You know, screw screw all that. You know, I, I don't care about it. I'm nobody. Okay. But I'm telling you, these things happen, and I have no reason to lie. You put me on a lie detector test, I'm telling you some biblical things are happening. And, and people, you think, uh, you know, Donald Trump is not Donald Trump. He's David Patton, son of General Patton. And I think he's even married well, to actually, Diane. I think he's the All right, Eric. Patton, but so, let's anyway. Not- it's Let's about disclosure. There's, there's no it's more election, disclosure. guys. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Grand awakening. There's okay. no more Anna, election, Anna, guys. Your turn. Thank you, Eric. Go ahead. Uh, I'm sorry. I bored you. It's Donna. Oh, Donna. No, me. We're going around to Donna right now. And thank you. Go ahead. I, I, I really don't have anything to say except for that I want to figure out what to unmanifest that, that, that would be the worst possible outcome of of this eclipse the worst possible and then and then the best possible and then to reverse it okay because i use negative i use quantum energies that have specific frequencies to do various different things i have in my mind i channel 5,000 different kinds of energies to do different things. One of the most powerful ones that I use in my manifestations is called Mystery of Reversal. And the, it basically is exactly that. Like, we don't know how it's going to happen. I don't know what, how it's going to happen whenever I do something. But my intent would be if somebody has a certain disease or if there is a certain bad thing that's going to happen, I overlay and reverse the whole situation and then increase it, the positive outcome. So that's kind of how the mechanism of manifestation uh, works that I do. So I just kind of, well, I'd like to hear from Eric a little bit more on what he thinks the outcome of the eclipse is going to, going to be. Okay, but I, I want to go I, to Eric. Eric. Sorry, I, I want to give David a chance. And or, then we're going to go for a free for all, okay? Okay. So, all right. Hold on to your thought and hold on to the question. Let's just let David complete the circle here and, and do Okay. His, Thank you. Uh, um, go ahead. Uh, why are we looking at Donna when I'm talking? Oh, whatever reason. Uh, okay. Um, so there is no more election. They removed the emblem of United States at the Joe Biden inauguration. I mean, the last, uh, what you call it? the state of the union. So they have written a, a new constitution. They want to bring it out. And I don't know when they bring it out, they will bring it out. There won't, there won't be any more election. This is all show, TV show. Even if Trump comes, there's no way Trump will come or Biden will come again. The, it, it's a multiple event will happen. We cannot say it on the air right now for security. But whatever reason, whatever happens, America would be uh, union, uh, in a union with the uh, uh, United Nations, and, and uh, they call it some new name, I forgot, they, they call it the uh, United Americans Nation or something. Also, I, as a representative uh, of some platform, I would like to uh, propose we unite uh, Canada, South America, and America in one union best for economical reason for everybody and uh, and everything for all the people of the North and South uh, American Union. We can call it Americana or American Union or whatever you want to call it. So we will have a new money, maybe uh, even better than that for the planet, AI. We ask AI to create a new language for humanity. This English language sucks. We cannot present ourselves emotionally and like French or Arabic or Persian or other languages. This language sucks for humanity in all fronts. We should have a united language that AI can uh, create in five minutes going through a million languages. And we should all have a second language as that next five years. So also American uh, Union, all North, South America, everybody, no borders, no past, everything Everything free for all Americans from Canada down to Chile. That's the best thing for Americans and South Americans. 
economically, uh, organically, uh, you name it, for every front. Because we're going we're gonna to have four division in the world. Russia will take over all Europe, no doubt. He will uh, put in, uh, he will attack Poland, Germany especially. Germany would be devastated because of the karmic will they have with Germany. They, he would also attack Sweden and Finland in five minutes. He's over there with these submarines coming every day, checking out. So those countries are gone. Europe uh, will fall to your uh, Russian sector. Then China will take over Taiwan and all the Korea and all that Japan shit. That section goes to China. Then America left alone this side. That's the only option for America to grab all the uh, land of Canada and all the down to Chile and one union and one money, new money. Okay, and I think you forgot a good part of the planet, but that's okay. <laughs> I mean, uh, that's nice to hear your theories, but um, I think there would be a number of countries that might have some objections to your... your yeah, there's a lot of objects. I object everything myself too, but the time travels has shown us 2087, that's what the four sectors will be. And, and I talked to the guy in, when he was live, you know, the, what was his name, Eric? The, uh, uh, I, I, you lost me, man. Are you, are the you the time travel we always followed when he was alive. The, uh, Peter? No, the other guy. Um, Montauk <laughs> Project guy. Montauk Project guy. Oh. Um. The, uh, now, it's so much stuff in my head, I can't... Anyways, so he showed us at the time, 2087, uh, America is in a different ball game and military is running it. And best, best option for mil America right now, military takeover, remove the constitution and they work for a new constitution uh, for two years interim military government, remove all these politicians. They're messing up against the constitution and it's a treason against America, all of them. And there is million people on the list they want to execute. So in these two years, they can execute all those people. I mean, we're not talking about the, the, the Epstein list. We're talking big list. And they say there are a million people in that list. So let them clean up the planet. The next two years, we will start a new America. And these two years, they, the military will run the business and, and in, in a nice fashion, not, not in a gun on your head. And they will, okay. they will do a very good job, and we stand by our military. Thank you, David. Uh, all right, so, Eric, Donna asked you a question. Do you want to answer it now? I, I wanted to. I, I, she is very perceptive. I wanted to say that I also loved what she said, because we are manifestors, and, and we are to think positive things and not negative things and that's the polarities fear and love when you live in the love vibrational frequency doors open magically for you and 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 she i've seen donna do magic many times i've worked with dr donna uh and she, i've seen her do many healings um, live and i love her dearly she's a she's a manifester and she understands the principles of of manifestation and, and you know it's easy to be mistaken as ego and and based and, and sounding bad and I laugh you know I don't I tell people I have 24 teeth left you know and I don't care I show and I don't wear any makeup or color my hair or or you know and, and it's I have no problem I love myself and and people who love me and know me understand my energy is Donna who operates on that same level of, of vibrational frequency and the important point that she's making is that we, you know don't be you know, the world is not going to, there's no war, okay, because it affects many different, as quantum beings, as a quantum levels of Earth, and, and the, the other divine beings are not going to let this happen, because the nuclear shit affects them, because you remember um, Operation um, High Jump, when Dr. Admiral Byrd was told by them, who live in, in the inner Earth, that, you know, Nagasaki and Hiroshima was a no-no, and, and, you know, in the 47, and, and you know, you, we are affecting other realms that we don't realize. So this is a grand awakening, and nothing can stop what's happening. We're all going to, if people cannot hold this vibrational frequency, they will be taken off planet and, or, or move on to another um, timeline, you know, where they'll merge later. They'll take a detour and have work to do. 
okay? But this is a merging of timelines, and, and it's a awakening, the grand awakening. And what we're seeing is, and, and that's why these satanic uh, people that we're fighting and getting rid of, they have to do these rituals on exact dates, just like the sacrifice of Kate Middleton, that all royal knew that she had to be sacrificed for the upcoming, you know, they had to keep feeding Moloch, you know, and everybody thinking they were celebrating Easter, they were celebrating Ishtar, where they're screwing to have babies on, on Christmas so they can sacrifice them to Moloch. You know, which right. is another well, let me just say, training. though, that the information... Well, I'm saying these things happen on a certain days, and April 8th is the next day, and that's what this show's about. Okay, and Kate Millican what... has not been uh, sacrificed. Uh, my well, information is that she's actually gone into witness protection. Well, I so, hope so, and she's giving maybe, information. Exactly. Yeah. They were supposed to do that, but luckily it didn't happen because, as you say, the White Hats are in control. More proof that the White Hats are in control. Just I think like it's I a mistake personally to say the white hats are in control and we are going to just now jump around the group okay and okay. um so so just want to say i appreciate that a lot of people want to say that but well, i think there's plenty of indication all around the earth that everything is not in control in a positive way so if you consider the white hats to be the positive side then you have to look at the world situation and you see that we're on the right. brink of world war and a lot of other factors are still at play now, I think they are working to become in control, and they may have, right. have successes, and they have failures as well. And sure. uh, I do it's believe over. That, that, yeah, we're, we're in the midst of it, it's and it's over. very nice to say they're in control, but actually I don't yeah. think they want to take responsibility for all the, the dark things that are happening, even as we speak now. So I think that we shouldn't go to sleep and think everything's fine and someone else is in the driver's seat, I think. You know, a la Donna's beginnings is to just remember that we are in the driver's seat. And when Trump does his speeches, he talks very carefully, saying we're returning the country to the American people. So just have something of an issue with it's it's wording. OK, Eric, in, in, in spirit, we agree. OK, but in 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 practice, in the practical world. We can clearly see that we've got an uphill battle going on right now, and case in point, maybe April 8th. So whether there are going to be certain incidences that the dark side does, because, and I've done a, I, I don't know, you probably all didn't see my interview with David Serrata. He did a lovely job of pinpointing the... Um, the numerologic gematria, the all the uh, corresponding the angles of the pyramid and this and that, that all point to something very significant happening on this day uh, coming up. And I also want to say that the day, as we think of it, you know, because we wake up in America, or at least in California, and most of the world, <laughs> the rest of the world has already lived their day and they're going into their evening at the same time so we're going to keep in mind that when we're looking at everything as falling around us or happening around us that that this is still an ongoing story um okay so anyone else i i think the red heifer sacrifice that the israelis are doing i just want to say it's a blood this blood sacrificing of whether it be animals or humans children this is a Draco reptilian gray exercise, okay? And just call it what it is and then stop it, okay? It should stop. And there's indicators here. All the people that are supporting Israel in their genocide against Palestine right now, keep in mind blood sacrifice is part of the Dra Draco reptilian exercise in in the way they they deal with the world so we don't need any more of that and it needs to stop okay david um i just want to bring up uh, a notion that i've been looking to uh, identify the antichrist i just came to identification and i'm 99 percent sure that is netanyahu for two reasons i saw the video that he mentioned his name his dad's name who he is and he blasphemed uh, Christ and he named himself as Messiah. This, and, and his intention to build a third temple 
and uh, and all that thing, and, and that puts him right in front of Jesus against the Messiah. So for that reason, I see potentially Israel. Everything will end up in Israel, and Israel uh, at, at the moment. That's why Mehdi, Imam Mehdi, the twelfth Imam of Islamic, and Jesus, they will uh, show themselves on Mount Zion, and that moment. The whole humanity will see them, and they hear them, and there is a prayer that they will run for humanity, and everybody will pray on their knees. And, and it's written that uh, Jesus will ask Imam Mahdi to lead that prayer, and it's written in, in many, many books and from prophets and down the road. So, uh, and, and uh, the, the things we have studied about Imam Mahdi, the 12th Imam, which he disappeared, in a well from uh, his enemies to be killed. So uh, he's alive and he's watching the situation and he will return as a, a, a very young man. And they written that when the world see him on TV or wherever they hear him, uh, his voice and what he's saying and what his appearance is, he's as good as Jesus. And I've traveled, time traveled back. I had a time with Jesus on Mount Zion. And after 10 years of prayer, I did happen to me. And my life was changed upside down. He knew me. He knew our group of what's our intention and what we're doing. They know everything from the other side. And this, uh, cosmically, uh, this event, humanity might have split to two groups, like the Hopis, they say, the uh, ancient, uh, uh, oh God, uh, ancient people, Prophecy. they pro prophesied that, Humanity would have split to two groups. We might suddenly not see these people anymore, negative ones. We might suddenly uh, appear in a new earth with very positive side of which will happy go forever and amen to peace. If not that, if that doesn't happen on eight or what, it will happen when they land on a Mount Zion, Jesus and Matthew. And there's a notion that Moses will appear to. I'm not sure about that, but I've read that too. So... It's a worldwide event, and, and, and it, this thing is cosmic event. It's crossing over America, and that makes the America very special at this point of history. And we as humans, humanity in America, we should manifest a better humanity and better future for all mankind, not only ourselves, and stop warmongering and all that shit. So uh, uh, just go on meditation, prayer, and Find yourself, find your uh, Atma, the, the God-given uh, cosmic seed inside you to connect with cosmos. And your brothers in, out there that are watching us, they're praying, uh, maybe we stop this warmongering. And uh, if we don't, they will interfere and that would be end of the everything. So we don't want to get to that point. So let us bring peace. Peace is the main thing at this point in crossing all the lines and all the cross. I'm sorry, it took so long. Go ahead. Okay, thank you. Thank you, David. Okay. Uh, anyone else want to add to that or say something completely different? Hello? Yeah, let's go back to uh, biblical and political history and wars. Let's talk about it. So the last time we had three conjunctions, we had a partial lunar eclipse on the 25th of March, that began, you know, basically 10 days ago, it's going to be two weeks, it's going to lead right into the to total solar eclipse, plus the Devil's Comet, right, the Pons Brooks, which will be most, which will be visible during the eclipse, as well as the, the, the brightest day, I think, on the 12th of April. And we have two broods of cicadas, 17 years and 13 years. And they only match up every 200 years. So if you go back to 1811, you have the same conjuncture, the same cicadas, and what the hell happened? If history is true, because we know that the Cabal has been rewriting history, if history is true, that solar eclipse went over the New, New Madrid fault line in Missouri slash Illinois. And the claim, the historical claim, a, a very, taken with a grain of salt, was a couple thousand earthquakes like leading up or after the eclipse. That was the story then. But what we do know historically was accurate that the Rothschild bank industry of the day started the War of 1812 because America would not agree to whatever terms there were. So we had a war follow this. 
So if you look at the reversal of this, we had Jacob Rothschild dying on the 24th of February. We had the Federal Reserve no longer on March 11th, and a very curious 33 day, uh, no longer uh, allowing banks to be the fiat banking system it used to be, meaning they can't, for every $1,000 loan, they can't create $10,000 out of thin air, right? That's over with, that window's closed. So the Federal Reserve is no longer the Federal Reserve. So we got the death of the, the federal banking system, where we had the beginning that started a war that really got the push in, eventually the Civil War, eventually the, the laws of 1871, which got the IRS involved, which got the Federal Reserve involved, all of this, the maritime port of D.C. All of this now is coming to an end, I believe, through the eclipse. Okay. Uh, I've heard that theory, um, and there are certain mer movements. I have to say that a lot of things that are taking place, like what you just talked about, this Federal Reserve being stopped from creating, I don't know, we, I mean, we would need proof of that, I think, but the bottom line is that you, we're you get hearing... A, a, you, Carrie, you can get a I, January 24th press release from the Federal Reserve that explains right. that they shut down. Fine. Okay. So these are also moves behind the scenes by the White Hats. And some of them manifest and come forward. Um, and others do not, okay, quite yet. And they're also, you know, um, anyone who listens to Juan on a regular basis will find out that he is covering for them. He's equivocating at this point, going back and forth, covering actual operations that are taking place. Um, so I, I have to say that what we're going to see on the 8th of, of April may not manifest on that day. So I think this is also an important sort of heads up for every one of us to keep our eyes on the horizon, to keep our eyes around ourselves and with, with loved ones and so on and so forth, that they will kick something off. When they kick something off, it could often be a secret move, okay? When CERN goes live, you're not going to notice it, okay, in your everyday life, necessarily. They already have been creating portals, okay? They created a portal and keep it open to the Draco galaxy, you know, from the beginning, all right? And there's also now a, uh, Japan was told to build a CERN-like facility, in case you don't know about that. And uh, I recently heard that there's also a linear accelerator, I believe, type, CERN type underground in Texas. And so that may be activated. So what we have is um, different factions. And I have to say that there can also be people that are going to be working on the dark and the light. There's a reason for that, okay, to bring balance to this planet. So you cannot dispel completely the darkness but you certainly can rebalance it so that we have more of a balance here on Earth to between dark and light. And so I, I just want to say that rather than sort of, um, I don't know, having sort of a over the rainbow necessarily attitude towards the 8th of April, it's also important to realize that we haven't, eclipsing is an occulting of the sun, in other words, dark, around between the sun and the earth. The sun is usually considered to be, you know, the giver of life, and the moon is, is, is what we say the shadow, okay, the shadow self or the, the darkness, but it, al it also symbolizes the feminine. The, the, uh, the occult, the Illuminati, will use that to do certain things that will probably bring in entities open doors you know opening these portals like CERN is going to do sending the missiles into the eclipse like NASA is going to do they are organizations that have been negatively based now you are someone here I think maybe it was you James that claims that CERN is suddenly under the White Hat control that I was, have not that was seen Eric, that evidence was Eric. But I, I'm yes, a great I'm not seeing, Okay, fair, fine. You know, it's not so much who said it <laughs> as whether it's true or not. That's the question. Now, I appreciate that idea, but we haven't seen any proof of that so far. You, as far as you I'm might concerned. see it on Monday the 8th. And what do I mean by that? Well, maybe yes. CERN isn't so much going to open a portal on Monday to another realm, to hell or wherever. 
maybe it's going to partake in what? The cinema show in the sky. What yeah, exactly. About? Yeah, Pro it's a Pro Project Bluebeam. Project Bluebeam, exactly. They want to show uh, uh, fake Jesus on the sky and the rapture. Uh, yeah, this. I have actually written an article about this already, yes, and talked about that on a show the other day. So, yes, I have some information along those lines, which I can disclose here, too, if you want. But, you know, yes, these things are all possible. In other words, it's also interesting that every moment of every day, all these possibilities existed simultaneously because time and space are simultaneous. So it's not only that day. I'm just, you know, kind of want to widen this idea. When people narrow their focus too much, they get a little overexcited. You know, a lot of people are driving to this place to take photographs, so and so. Not sure there'll be. Some well, well, as a about. normal phenomenon, it's a normal phenomenon. It happens not frequently, but it does happen. This eclipse is twice as long as any other eclipse in like the last thousand years. It's four minutes, and people are like, that's a short period of time. Yeah, it's a short period of time in the bar in New York City having a conversation, but hold your breath for four minutes. Hold your breath for two minutes and compare the two. It is a long time. Okay, well, within that long time, you know, I think when I see a lot of what's going on right now, it's, it seems actually almost tribal going back to ancient times when humans were perhaps less knowledgeable and more superstitious about what went on in the heavens above their head, so to speak. And they worshiped aliens as God, etc. You know, so I just don't think we should make too much of a mistake about that. But I definitely think opening and closing of portals, letting something in or letting something out or all of this is is definitely you know, on the table when we're talking about this event, for sure. Um, okay, so I'm going to see. I, I think we've been going for quite a while, but we had a late there, start. So there is one I'm assumption, wanna... if I could, if I could say last thing. Okay. There is, there is a hypothesis, as we all know, that the moon is hollow and, and is a lab, and and a bunch of other stuff that it's not related to this talk, but. I have a assumption that I heard an astrologer told said that none of these events are in where they supposed to be. The sun is not where it's supposed to be. The moon is not where it's supposed to be. It means that there could be a second hand pulling the moon in a different direction. Maybe they even stop the moon. They have the power. Some outside source or inside source we don't know they can stop the moon for a long time seven days three days they probably want to play with human humanity and show humanity that they wake up or or maybe they want to kill them i don't know all above so that's why we need to create our communities survivability that's why we're talking at our event april 11 to 14 in los angeles come to alien event go to alien Event.com, Kerry Cassidy will be there, and we all <laughs> expecting you guys to be there. So, right. um, <laughs> um, you know, okay. you made an excellent point, uh, Kerry. You, you talked about the, the shapes and the nature and, and making these mistakes of what people thought in the past. And I think these are excellent points because, you know, what? How does an eclipse look with a flat Earth plane? And is the sun? Are these parts of the disclosures that the sun and the moon? Are we seeing the brew or second sun or a distant sun? Are well, we? Is there a firmament? Made a very, very big. You should watch my video interview. I will. I, I'll yeah. watch that. He he really documented himself very very well. Um, I just want to interrupt here a moment to say that Josh Reed has joined us. Josh, thank you for coming, Go and um, I want to give you a chance to, to sort of catch up in your own way. And I know that you did a show recently on the Eclipse with David Nina Rodriguez, and I saw that. And um, I think you did a very good job there. So please introduce yourself briefly. We're doing brief interviews. So I'm going to get a little verbal. But I'm um, giving you the floor for 